Hey y'all, I'm Elisa, the Scrappy Wife behind ScrappyWife.com, and today I'm working in my memory planner. All right, today I have a lot of goodies pulled out right here. I am working in my memory planner. We are working on the end of November, very beginning of December. I have a few photos from a very busy weekend. So we're going to kind of have to work around how we can get all of that to um, work. But I thought I would bring you guys along. I'm using stuff from my Christmas stash because why not? Let's go for it. All right, let's do it. All right, I'm going to start by cutting apart the pictures. Like I said, for this particular week, it's the last week of November, very beginning of December. Um, it was very heavily loaded towards the weekend. Most of the pictures are from the weekend. So I have to figure out a way to balance the spread, get the pictures where I need them to be and have it still kind of make sense visually. So that'll be kind of the trick as we work through the spread. I pulled out these puppy dog stickers because come on, they are adorable. And I'm kind of just going through my Christmas stash. I keep all my Christmas papers and my Christmas crafting stuff in a separate box that just gets pulled down in the month of December, the end of November, beginning of December, as I start doing Christmas crafting. And so it's kind of fun because you dig through and it's like getting brand new supplies because I haven't seen them for a year. So I'm going to use some of these papers. It's a mix from Hip Kit Club, which I believe is where this particular paper is from. And then I have pieces from Felicity Jane as well. Let's pull this paper over into the left hand sidebar just to set the tone for the page. I love using big pieces of torn scrapbook paper. I think it makes a nice impression on the page. I love the torn look because it looks very natural, organic. It just, I like the imperfection of it all because I think when you are purposefully imperfect, it just takes a lot of pressure off of how you are doing your crafting. So, Let's start by just trimming this down just a little bit so it doesn't hang over the edge. I like what that looks like. And then I wanted to bring in this black and white buff buffalo plaid. And I'm going to bring it in along the bottom. So at this point, this is where I'm kind of thinking of where things might go. Because I have a lot that will go on the right side of the spread, I am thinking that maybe I will preserve this left side of the spread primarily for all of the journaling. The right will be a ton of pictures and give me lots of opportunity to get all of those down on the page. And then the left side will be an opportunity to add the journaling in that kind of talks through the whole week. Sometimes it's a fun way to do it instead of having lots of little journaling spots where you're doing almost captions for your pictures, just one full spot to tell what happened during the week um, it can be a nice way to bring that all together. And then it gives you, it frees you up for what you want to do with the pictures uh, throughout the rest of the spread. I'm going to pull that buffalo plaid all of the way across. So I'm just making sure I have enough room. Obviously, it's a little jaggedy at the end, so I have to just shift it ever so slightly so I can cut off that bottom section of scrapbook paper. I'll just get it placed and then go back and trim it. Yes, I could measure. Yes, I could pull out my big paper slicer, um, but I just want these kinds of projects to be easy and fun, and I don't want to have to pull out a million different things to work on them. So we're just going to eyeball lots of things, which is kind of how I roll with my memory planning. It's how I roll with lots of projects, to be honest. So just a uh, heads up in advance. I'm not big on the measuring. I'm big on the eyeballing it and just making it look good, um, just depending on how I'm looking at it. Before I start matting these pictures, I'm just going to play with the placement to see where things might end up, how everything is going to fit. Like I said, it was a busy weekend. There was a gymnastics meet that my son competed in. Um, I had pictures from a family movie night, church rehearsal, um, my husband helping me out in my studio because this was the second release of product that I had over in my website. And it was a lot of product to process and put together and he was awesome in helping me do that. So I have all of these pictures. I love the placement. So I'm just going to take a moment here and mat them. We're doing red and green. Um, this time I'm actually planning where the red and green are going to go. So it's balanced. Sometimes I just mat all the pictures randomly and just see how it turns out. 
I do want it a little bit more balanced because I wanted to make sure that I was pulling the red and green over to the right side in as equal amounts as I could. I have four pictures, sorry, I have seven pictures. So that means four of them will be in green. Let's see, four in green, three in red, something like that. Something like that over there. I forget which one it ends up as. But I just like matting them all. This is another way to bring in a little bit of color. You don't always have to use scrapbook paper. If you want to have the matting look, you can always use markers. Um, once you adhere these to the page, you can use a highlighter. There's other ways to do um, that same look without pulling in scrapbook paper, which of course adds bulk to your album. I originally thought that matting photos over on the right side in the red and green would bring enough of the red and green to balance the scrapbook paper on the left. But once I did it, I really didn't feel like that was actually successful. So what I'm going to do is actually add a little bit over here. Um, again, we're going with the torn look. I end up really digging this. One of the reasons is because it kind of looks like a Christmas present. It looks like wrapping paper that has been torn open to reveal a super fun beginning to the holiday season. So um, another reason to go for the torn look during your December memory planning because it kind of um, is reminiscent of opening packages. Now that I have that little peak of scrapbook paper in place in the top right, I can go ahead and get my pictures in place and adhere them. Um, I say it all of the time. I work from big to small when I'm doing my memory planning, meaning I do the biggest elements on the page first and then get smaller and smaller. So in this case, the biggest elements um, are generally these scrapbook paper backgrounds that I use, something in the background um, that I'm wanting to use to anchor the spread. That would be the biggest elements. Then it generally comes the photos, um, whether they are matted or not, they will come next because they're kind of my medium sized element. And then I bring lots of little embellishments through stickers or paper ephemera um, that comes in at the last little bit. I'll stick journaling in there. And a lot of times there's a few last minute details of some small pieces here and there. All right, I have this open spot in the right bottom corner that I wasn't really sure what I was going to do until I saw this card in my sash. It says, tis the season to be jolly. I'm going to fussy cut out the words from this card. It's a pretty big element, but I love how big it is in that corner. It fits perfectly in there. I think it was kind of made to be there and it brings a ton of red over, which I think um, provides a nice balance to the spread. So let's do plenty of adhesive, get that down. Love how that worked out. Now let's play with these cutie little dogs. Normally I would not add puffy stickers to my memory planner and I would not recommend that you do it either, but I did have these in my stash and they were super cute and I didn't have a specific theme for this week except that I wanted to do holiday. So with that in mind, I went ahead and decided I'm going to go for these cute uh, dog stickers. I think it's funny. There's not even any pictures of my dog Penny on these pages. It's just the family, but I think the dogs are fun and they're a great size to kind of fill in some of the space. I will have a little bit of extra space over here on the right that I can fill in. Um, I'm putting the dogs first again, biggest to smallest. We'll put the dogs in place and then I'm going to bring in a few of these stars to help fill in some little gaps and connect all the way across the page, figuring out where these dogs will fit best. I like to put stickers near the corners of my photos because I feel like it just softens the overall look of the photo. Once I get those in place, once I'm happy with that, then we're gonna take a second to uh, punch the holes that are being covered up and add lines for journaling and do the actual journaling um, where I talk about what was going on that week, how everything um, worked out, all of that business. So I use a T-square ruler to add journaling lines. I don't really trust myself to write straight across the page, so I prefer to always have lines. Again, I don't really measure. I just use that as a straight edge and I just go for it and hope for the best. There's kind of an awkward little white spot right here. So I decided to pull in some ribbon to add right in this section. Once that's covered up, then I will go ahead and fill in the journaling. And that's going to be it for this memory planning spread. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Consider hitting that subscribe button as well as the bell notification button. Um, like I said, these are supplies that I pulled from my stash, but I will link my most common memory planning supplies down in the description box below, including the photo printer I use, the app I use to print photos, all that business you will be able to find down in the description box below. 
I want to give a huge shout out to all of my Patreon members. Thank you all so much for all of your support. It is just such a fun community over there and we would love to have you join us. Now is a great time to join. Give yourself a little present going into 2024. You can find the link for Patreon down in the description box as well. All right. I hope that you have a fabulous day and as always, keep it creative.